Hello there. Um, I have a word from the Lord in regards to just staying focused and putting him first in every area of our lives. But specifically, I have a word concerning relationships and how relationships have drawn so many people out of the will of God relationships that were not ordained by God. This ministers to both men and women. So let me just pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I just thank you, sir, for your anointing to share your word, to share your heart with your sons and your daughters. I thank you for the blessing upon your word and your blessing upon the ears of those listening right now, that their hearts are open and ready to receive. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ecclesiastes 3. Um, I've noticed, uh, even in my past years before married, how we can be unhappy and not know that we're unhappy. And when we're unhappy, we are drawn into relationships. We think that those relationships can cure or heal the unhappiness that we're in. And sometimes we don't even know that we're unhappy. We don't know that, you know, we've got some things going on on the inside. We've got some uh, voids that we're trying to fill. And it may not always be with relationships, but I am focusing on relationships in this video um, and probably the next one as well. Um, but it can be another job, another um, idea or another venture, just something to keep us busy where we're not focusing or putting our focus on our relationship with our first true love, our truest love ever. And that's with God through our relationship with his son, Jesus empowered by the Holy Spirit. So there is a scripture once again in Ecclesiastes 3 and 11, the word of God says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also planted eternity in men's hearts and minds, a divinely implanted sense of a purpose working through the ages, which nothing under the sun, but God alone can satisfy. So I saw that scripture so many years back when I was single, uh, my husband had not found me as of yet. And I recognized that I was trying to fill some voids with relationships, uh, with, you know, education, uh, seeking new job opportunities. I was an entrepreneur at that time. So I was also seeking business deals and, you know, just trying to make some things happen. But the bottom line, I was trying to fill a void. Um, I grew up with, uh, my mother was a single parent and my father died while I was in my mother's stomach. So I grew up without a father. Um, but I thank God right now, I know, and I have known for many, many years now, who my true father is. And so that's where my strength and my love and any, any and every possible void has been filled with the love of God. So, but this scripture here, it, it shares that nothing under the sun, but God alone can satisfy this place, this spot that he's placed in our hearts. I call it the G spot, um, it's a God spot and nothing and no one else can fill that spot. And until we put God in his rightful place, in our hearts, in our lives, in our daily lives, um, we'll continue to try to fill the, that spot with people and with things. And the word of God specifically says that nothing under the sun, which means nothing on this earth is gonna be able to feel that void or satisfy you. So um, I shared in a 
previous teaching as I was opening up with this Jesus Rehab uh, series. Once again, Jesus Rehab is for men or women. It's just, you know, keeping us close to our first true love and, you know, helping us to deal with any behavior, um, any anything that's not normal, um, any nature that would call us away from our true identity in Christ, um, where we will experience the victory and we will experience his peace like never before. I made a note and the Lord continues to minister this to me to share. Um, this is something that he has shared with me personally many, many years ago. Once again, before I was married, I was single. So I do know um, what unmarried people, the temptations and the challenges that unmarried people can go through. But one, this key line stands out, your lovers will and have forgotten you. They do not seek after you. And that is in Jeremiah 30 and verse 14. I have it open right now in my Bible. You can write this down. I really encourage you to go back and review this. Um, even if married, you know, sometimes we have to look back and be reminded that who our first true love is so that we can have right relationship with our spouse um, and not seek to them to fulfill um, anything in us that only God can feel. But in Jeremiah 30 and verse 14, the word of God, and I'm reading the Amplified, it says, all your lovers have forgotten you. They neither seek, inquire of, nor do they require of you. As well in Hosea, Hosea 2 and 7. I know that's deep, um, but it's real. And, you know, many can sit back right now and think about, you know, have you um, heard from your lovers, you know, those that you've given your soul to or, you know, those that you've given just a piece of your life to or you've given time over to them they've moved on and even maybe you have moved on and you were considered a lover to somebody else. And if you think about it, you don't really remember them. Hosea 2 and verse seven, it says, and she will follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. She shall seek them, inquire for and require of them, but shall not find them. Then she'll say, let me go and return to my first husband, for then it was better with me than now. Uh, this specific scripture is ministering to uh, an unfaithful person or just the unfaithful people that were following God. But I want to continue to encourage you that if you just return to your true love of seeking the Lord um, back to a place where you're not calling him master, only just going to church or, you know, reading the Bible here and there, but you actually consider him your husband. Um, once again, as we saw from the beginning in Ecclesiastes 3 and 11, that there's nothing under the sun nothing under the sun that can satisfy us the way God can. And he has placed eternity in our hearts that only he and he alone can satisfy that spot. So we need to get back to a place where we're calling him husband and not our, just our master, someone we're serving, but a husband is our friend. I'm going to continue um, in the next part of this because I want to share with you that there is a setup. If you continue in this behavior um, of putting things before God, there is a setup for shame and embarrassment. And I'm going to share 
some things with you concerning that next.